In this chapter, we're going to learn about capital investment decisions and the time value of money. Capital budgeting is the process of making capital investment decisions. Capital investments are whenever we buy assets that we use for a long period of time and which require large sums of money. Examples of capital investments are buying new equipment, building new plant, automating production, um, developing major commercial websites, also things like um, investing in a new fleet of vehicles, all those are considered capital investments. Those are typically the ones that are shown as long-term assets in your balance sheet. Whenever we make capital budgeting decisions, we use four methods of analyzing those decisions. So once we've picked out our um, capital investments, we will use these four methods to analyze them and figure out which one's best. We use payback period and accounting rate of return. These two are quick and easy to calculate and typically we use them for the shorter lifespan investments. And then we can also use net present value and internal rate of return. These are a little bit more difficult to calculate and typically used for longer span investments. The last two consider time value of money, which we'll talk about later. Let's take a quick look at cash basis versus accrual basis. If you think of accounting one, um, in accounting one, we said GAAP requires us to prepare financial statement based on accrual accounting. GAAP requires accrual accounting. However, when we're doing capital investment decisions, we will be looking at cash flows instead. So we're not going to look at accounting income. We're going to look at cash flows except for one method. For accounting rate of return, we will use accrual based accounting income. How do you remember which one to use accounting income? It's ARR, which stands for accounting rate of return. That's one that uses accounting income. Whenever we are looking at cash flows from our investment, they would include future cash revenue. However, any future savings on cash costs will also be considered a cash inflow. So if we don't have to pay for costs going forward, so any cost savings would also be considered a cash inflow to the company. Also, don't forget when we are looking at assets, if there's a residual value of an asset, we would also take that into consideration and that would be considered a cash inflow. So let's go through the capital budgeting process. The first step is to identify potential investments. In a typical company, there will be a number of capital investment projects that the company wants to do, but they cannot get into everything because they are limited by constraints. At this stage, they will identify all the potential investments that they would like to do. So different managers of different areas will list all the potential investments. Once the investments are identified, then managers have to come up with the projected cash inflows for each of the investments. This is a very hard time consuming process. However, managers have to make the best possible projections given the information they have. Once we have the projected cash inflows, we go ahead and analyze the investments using the four methods that we talked about, four methods of investment analysis. You would use one or more of the four methods that we listed before. The four methods, if you remembered, were payback period, accounting rate of return, net present value, and internal rate of return. Once we analyze the investments, some of the potential investments that we identified in step one would get rejected right away. After analyzing the investments, we go through the next steps with whatever passed through our analysis. Once, let's say, for example, that we had a lot of potential investments and there are only three investments that passed the, anal uh, the analysis. Let's say that the three that passed the analysis were building an addition to our building, upgrading the computer system, and replacing our existing fleet of vehicles. Now that we have identified these three investments, we come across a problem. We don't have enough money to invest in all these three projects. So what do we do? In this type of situation, companies do what they call capital rationing. Capital rationing is a term we used when companies have to choose among alternative capital investments. 
these decisions are typically done based on the availability of funds and how soon managers need this particular, a particular investment. So going back to our example, let's assume that this company only had money to do one particular investment and they decided to go with replacing their existing fleet of vehicles. What happens to the other two investments that pass the test? Upgrading the bill or building an addition and upgrading the computer system. Those will get kept for future funding. So those will stay in the list of investments for the future. They will continue to reassess those two investments. So if factors change and they don't need one of those investments, they will scrap it from the list of investments. Finally, companies will perform a post audit of their capital investment. A post audit is basically where they will go after the investment is done and compare the actual net cash flows from the project to the cash inflows they anticipated during step two of the capital budgeting process. A post audit helps companies figure out whether the investments are going as planned and if they are not going as planned, whether they should abandon the project and sell and recover whatever they can. For the rest of the chapter, we're going to focus on the four methods of analyzing investments. We're going to learn how to calculate them and learn about the pros and cons of each of them.